Hello, welcome to The Biblical Perspective, an in-depth expositional study in the Word of God. Greetings and welcome to this presentation of the Biblical Perspective Bible Study. My name is Kevin Dunnigan, and I'm happy, honored to have with me my life partner, my teaching partner, my dominoes partner, my bowling partner, my partner partner, who's also my wife, teacher Yvonne Dunnigan. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. Tonight's topic of conversation and study is the blessings of worship. Simply stated, mankind was created to worship God and have constant fellowship with him. We are to worship him with our minds, as he is to be revered in our thinking. We are to worship him with our voices, as we utter words of honor and adoration and sing songs of, of praise. We are to worship him with our actions as we endeavor to have holy behavior. Our hands are made for clapping celebrating God and giving him praise. Our arms are made to be lifted up towards heaven as an act of submission and honor. Our feet are made for standing before his presence with the willingness to go where he directs us. Our knees are made for kneeling before him to demonstrate that we are contrite in both posture and heart. Believers should be involved in corporate worship in the Church of Jesus Christ, where they meet on a regular basis to hear the taught Word of God. They are to offer prayers to God, to sing songs of praise to God, and to enjoy the warm and encouraging fellowship of other believers. So, Each. oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> so with what Yvonne just said, um, think of all the things that you use your hands for, your arms for, your feet, your legs, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And just look back and see how many times you use those same limbs and, and well, the pieces of the body that, that were just described to actually take time to worship God mm. compared to doing what yes. you wanted to do or what you feel that you were distracted or led to do. Good point. Each believer should always practice constant, ongoing, individual worship of God and praise and thanksgiving for being the beneficiaries, meaning we're receiving all of these things from God right. in his many blessings that he gives to, to us. Those blessings include, but are not limited to, salvation, God's love, his grace, his mercy, protection, and manifold provisions. Now, I, I know you said those things are not limited to that, but just salvation, love, grace, mercy, protection, and manifold provision, uh, I can survive off that. We can, <laughs> definitely, more now, than survive. <laughs> now, as we continue on with the presentation, the object of worship, the Bible is very clear in its instruction to believers that we are to worship God only. This is the first commandment given by God to his, his people in Israel in the law. It was reiterated by Christ at the, at the beginning of his ministry as he was being tempted by Satan in the wilderness. Scriptures that support the, um, those words are Exodus 20, verse 3, where it says, you shall have no other gods before me. Can and, I make a point right here? Sure. When we talk about, when God talks about, you shall have no other gods before me, that means we are to treat no other person, place, or thing in our life like God. Mm -hmm. And honey, even you, when I think about you, how much I love you, you can't even become before God in my life. God has to be the number one. I'm not jealous. <laughs> Meaning, he is not the chief God. 
that we sometimes, people sometimes call each other gods and this and that and the other. Mm -hmm. He's not the chief God. He is my only God. The that means, God. Yes. I think that this is pretty clear. He is to be the center of all worship. Yes and amen. Um, continuing where Satan was trying to tempt Jesus um, in Luke 4, 8, Jesus answered him, Satan, and said, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Now, to piggyback on what Yvonne was saying, um, we've all heard of that phrase, it's a thin line between love and hate. Yeah. Well, it's a thin line be between like and worship. Mm, yes. you know, using, um, as I, I fondly say, the male-based, testosterone-based life form, mm -hmm. we as men, we, we love our sports. And there are times where we will do everything that we need to do to get done so that we have time to sit down and watch whether it's football, basketball, mm -hmm. baseball. Yes. Um, we will make sure and do our best to communicate effectively and lovingly in, in most households, I hope, not to be disturbed <laughs> while watching said sporting event. Mm. But when it comes to worshiping God with our words, when it comes to taking time to worship God, with, you know, as far as corporate worship, mm. going to church, we will find, not all of us, but some of us, will find whatever excuse necessary mm -hmm. not to go to church not to go to Bible study, not to participate in intercessory prayer, not to, to take time to, to disciple uh, someone that's new to the, the, the body of Christ. We will find whatever excuse, it, it could be raining, it, mm. could, it could be, you, I could have a slight headache. Yes. And it's like, well, no, I don't feel like doing that now. Or, you know, uh, our, pa Pastor Fred usually goes past 12.30 and I want to see the pregame at 12 o'clock for the one o'clock football. So I'm going to stay home at, at 10 o'clock, wow. 10 a.m. So it's like we will find whatever excuse, but in doing that, we're actually worshiping that mm. because we're yes. making a way, we're making a concerted, sacrificed effort to be in front of that TV, to, to cheer for our team, instead of taking those same elements and using them in a godly uh, lifestyle of worship the Almighty. Mm. Yeah, that's saying a lot about how much we really love God. Yes. Well, in Psalms, in the holy scriptures of the Bible are replete with admonitions that it is the Lord God that we are to worship and to serve. Mm. In Psalms 95, 6, it says, Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. And Psalms 96, 4 through 5 says, For Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, for he is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are idols. Mm. They're not God, idols, but the Lord God made heavens. And I wanted to, something I read today that I just thought was just outrageous, but <laughs> throughout uh, recorded history, there has been between 8,000 to 12,000 gods that have been worshiped. Wow. And the Lord God of the scripture says that he is to be feared and worshiped above all gods. Right. So you can tell how many things and gods and that people put before God Almighty. It makes, it makes a sense that he is the creator, our maker, giver of life yes. and breath, and he will have no competing loyalties. It's amazing how um, the enemy creates distractions. Mm. Yeah. And uh, I heard it once eloquently said by the pastor of Emmanuel Community Church that distraction is destruction in slow motion. Mm. So yes. there's eight yes. to, to 12,000 distractions that's leading to destruction. Yes, wow. The New Testament writer to the Hebrews informs us that we are to worship God with service, with reverence, honor, respect, felt and shown, and also with words of worship and praise that are fitting for the one who has given us our eternal salvation. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, it says, since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, mm -hmm. let us be thankful 
and please God by worshiping him with holy fear and awe. In Hebrews 13, verse 15, it says, Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. Can I add something to that? Sure. Uh, I, I heard another um, Bible scholar put it this way. If there is anything in your life other than God that you look to or depend on as a source of well-being, satisfaction, or deliverance, then you are serving another God. Wow. It's not the God of the Bible. And, you know, many that are listening or watching this may ask, well, how can I continuously praise God? How, how can I do that? Because I have to go to work. I have to, you know, cook. I, I have to wash clothes. I have to go get gas in the car. How, how can I continuously praise God? Well, praise that pleases God is offered continuously so that we are always praising him and th that pleases God in a, in a way of sacrifice. You know, pleasing God through praise is sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It may be costly, it may be inconvenient, but it's necessary. Mm -hmm. let's, let, let's do a little, little example. Um, tell me what you did as far as at the cafe, at, at the, uh, the cafe. Tell me what you did you know, while you were there this week, just a, a few things. This week? Yes. Well, I did a lot. Wow. But a lot. <laughs> 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 no, just, just, a, just a few of the things. You know, you, you, you made some lattes. You know, made some lattes. Wow. I made some coffee. Really? I was scrub the floor. No. Wash dishes. Get out of here. <laughs> now, now, how can I continuously praise God in just a simple conversation like that? Say the same thing. I praise God. No, no. I, I want you to say. Oh, tell me exactly oh, what you did. How, how do you continue? Tell, no, repeat please. what you just oh, said. That you, you made do? some, you made some lattes. I you made some lattes. Praise God. I made some coffee. Praise God. <laughs> I, I cleaned the floor. Praise God. I washed dishes. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> so that is a way. That's how yes. I use a, 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 just a little, if I want to call it a spiritual muscle yes. to exercise that I continuously give God praise. So when I'm having a conversation. In no matter what environment, no matter what audience, no matter if the person is saved or not, when they're sharing something with me or talking, I'm saying, oh, praise God. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. That, that helps keep, keep, to keep your mind focused in, on praising God continuously. So it can be done. It just has to be understood how it's done. Yeah. And just the awareness, the practice. Exactly. Of it. You practice it. The more you do it, the it more it becomes. It becomes a, a part of your everyday conversation Absolutely. in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Additionally, the Apostle Paul, in his letter to the church at Rome, taught both Christian doctrine and practical Christian living. We instru are instructed that our worship of God is to be an all-encompassing lifestyle, yeah. dedicated to glorifying God. Everything believers do in life should be intended to bring glory to God. So if you want, you ask yourself, well, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? Mm. You know, should, should, I, should I be a... Yeah. Uh, a deacon or should I be an usher whatever you choose to be do it to the glory of God yes. whatever job that you may take as long as it is a job that is appropriate yes. according to the Christian lifestyle yes. and that's a conversation for another time <laughs> it, do it to the glory of God that is there in you will find your purpose mm -hmm. if you're if you are a surgeon do your surgery to the glory of God mm -hmm. if you are a trash collector do your service to, to the glory of God. You have found your purpose. You know what? That is what I put in my notes in bold writing. Did I steal your thunder? <laughs> yes, you did. I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead people, Go ahead and roar. When people don't know their purpose, this is it. Bottom line. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Yes. It tells us how to serve God. Read it, honey. It's no, your no. turn. I won't take it. No, 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 no. It's your turn. Go ahead. <laughs> Reiterate it. But, but it says, therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Yes. So that is our purpose. As yeah. believers, this is what we're supposed to do. It's an act of worship towards God. If we want to know how to worship God, it is right here. 
Go ahead. So, and do not be conformed to this world. Understand that as believers, as followers of Christ, as followers of God, that we are not to be conformed to this world. We are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So as we were talking about just practicing worshiping God, mm -hmm. just renewing our minds with the word of God, renewing our minds and telling him how much we love him, and renewing our minds and reminding ourselves we can't help but praise God. Exactly. And, it, and as you operate with that mindset, as, as you operate um, as far as what Yvonne was saying, you'll it'll be revealed to you your God-given talents mm -hmm. so that you say, oh, I can do this act of service. Also, the revelation of the spiritual gifts that, that which, or the many spiritual gifts that God has given you that you can use for an act of service and to bless others. Right. So, you know, as you worship, there's also revelation. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it says, whether then you eat, drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. The purpose of our lives, lives isn't to see how much we can get away with and still be Christians. Rather, it's to glorify God in everything that we do. Because the Holy Spirit will check us. And, and you know, if, we're, if we're going down, as I say, the, the Christian main street of life, and we, get, you know, we see something down the alley, the Holy Spirit will be like, no, stay straight. Amen. I don't care what your, your worldly GPS or series may say. <laughs> no, do not make that right. Do not make that left. Stay on, that, 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 stay on Main Street. Amen. Right. Amen. Can so, you talk to us about the ob ob objective of uh, worship? Yes. The objective of worship. Our worship of God is to give God honor that he deserves. It is to fulfill the purpose for which we were created. We were created for a purpose. Man was made to worship and to serve God by acts of reverence and obedience which demonstrates our love and appreciation for him. To worship God is to recognize, to honor, and to express the worthiness that he is due as our maker and our redeemer. Worship is to be a part of our daily fellowship with God. For believers, worship is our way of life. Couldn't Way put it life. any more simpler or plainer, just bottom line. Absolutely. The worship that we offer God must be both true and from the heart. It is not based on a wrong understanding of who God is, and it is not to be merely perfunctory acts without passion. This was taught by Jesus as a type of worship that God was looking for. And I love this scripture, John 4, 23 and 24. It says, but an hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such people the Father seeks and the Father uh, to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And it took me a minute to really understand this scripture, but some things, uh, after studying it for a while and really digging into it, I understood that it was a part of my heart, mm -hmm. that my heart was supposed to be in pursuit of an intimate spiritual relationship with God. That was... What, what I was supposed to be seeking, how I was supposed to be seeking God. I knew God was on the hunt for those people like that. Mm -hmm. So those who would worship him in a biblically accurate way through one who is true, and that, who is the truth, and that's Jesus himself. He Amen. said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. And that was in John 14, 6. Preach. That was our God. <laughs> and and, and, and to, if, if I can qualify to, to piggyback on that, yeah. um, the unfortunate reality is that in today's world, we have Christians that actually believe that, oh, they can only worship at church. Mm -hmm. Or they can only worship when, you know, they, they, they're going to get that good worship on because I got this really nice, you know, Easter bonnet on. Mm -hmm. Or, they, you know, I can only worship properly if I have this suit or, you know, the way, the way I look. Worship is not based in 
places and trappings and, and what you wear. Right. It, it's in where your heart is yeah. and with what you just said. So yeah. I'm not going to try to, you know. Seeking, seeking yeah. the so, God. In who spirit came for and you. in truth, yes. <laughs> Believers are chosen and predestined by God to receive redemption and to be adopted as his children. This was for the purpose of our worshiping him and bringing glory to his name. To worship God is why we were created, called, and given mm -hmm. spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 through 6 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us to, uh, to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will, and to praise, the, oh, I'm sorry, and to the, there's no and there, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which we freely bestowed upon us in the beloved. Mm. I have to hit zoom on this. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we read here, the plan God, uh, carried out by God through Jesus Christ to make salvation available to mankind is a special reason for believers. Listen. A special reason for believers to offer worship and praise. Yes. The Bible informs us that we, as the recipients of salvation, wow, I, I can tell you all that comes along with salvation. <laughs> that is worth. Blessing and eternal life mm. should offer God acceptable worship and spiritual sacrifices. That's our responsibility. Yes. But we should love that. We have the ability to worship God, our creator, who has given us this great salvation and all that it unfolds with that. We should learn to worship him wholeheartedly. That means having a true relationship with God. Yeah, I was just not about to say that. Not with the things that God offers ex us. Exactly. That's, mm -hmm. that's with relationship, not the reward of, of knowledge. Yes. Well, Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says, For this reason also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Mm. And I was dancing on this one today because I was <laughs> like, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait till we come back. First Peter 2, 5. You also are living stones, are being built up as, spir as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood wow. to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Praise God. Mm. The outcome of worship, is that true? Yes, <laughs> if you don't mind. Yeah. I don't mind. <laughs> As a result of our worshiping God, he is honored, he is glorified, he is pleased, and we are blessed. Mm -hmm. We are automatically blessed because the worship of God is obedience to what he has commanded. Now, according to the first 15 verses of Deuteronomy chapter 28, God has promised manifold blessings to those who obey him. Worship is a part of that obedience. When we worship God, we are acknowledging and demonstrating that he has both our attention mm. and our allegiance. Wow. And it shows that we, as believers, mm -hmm. recognize that no other being, no other pursuit, no other pleasure is worthy of the place that God inhabits on the throne of our hearts, no matter if it's uh, home building, mm no matter if it's pursuit for money, no matter if it's being a fan of a sports team, no matter if it's the love of your job, mm -hmm. the love of your car, the love of your house, all those are tertiary mm. compared yes. to where God should be placed as far as your focus and pursuit. Amen. Um, to support that statement, um, the scriptural reference in, is in Revelation chapter five, verse 13 through 14. 
and every created thing which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all things in them I heard saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever and ever. And the four living creatures kept saying amen and the elders fell down and worshiped. Amen. Ooh. As I, you know, I'm, the creative side of me is a visual, so I'm just, I have my own little CGI yeah. going on, you know. Absolutely. So uh, the summation. Yes, go ahead. God created mankind in his image and in his likeness and for his glory. Even after the original man, Adam, failed God by disobeying him, the love that God had for man caused him to forgive him and set a plan in motion for his eternal salvation. Wow. Um, because of God's love, God's forgiveness, God's mercy, God's grace, God's provision, God's protection, <laughs> and all of the other blessings that he gives to us, to us, he's worthy of our worship and praise. So let us not be found not worshiping him as we should. And to that we should say, Hallelujah. <laughs> do you have any closing remarks? I do. I was just thinking that if you are a believer and a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, know that your main purpose in this life mm -hmm. is to worship and praise God yes. on this earth. And if you're not a believer, mm -hmm. hopefully this lesson will help you understand why you were created mm -hmm. and what your purpose is. You know, you weren't created to please yourself. You weren't created to please others. You weren't, weren't created to find worship in things and, and obstacles. You were created to glorify God and given the opportunity to worship him through your conversation, your actions, and your heart. So with that being said, thank you for taking the time to listen to this uh, broadcast. And until next time, be blessed. Emmanuel Community Church is located at 12607 Crenshaw Boulevard in the city of Hawthorne, California. You can find all of our messages on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click subscribe and thanks for watching. Be blessed for God is with us.